Hi everybody, it is Friday morning and I want to show you my progress. So I have seven journals all at one stage. All the papers are cut and in them um, and in the order I want. <clears throat> so now I just want to add um, pages to them that go specifically for the person involved. So at this point, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, <clears throat> twenty-three. So I'm going to be adding some more, 23, and then I take that times two because that's more than one page. And I need to get another book out here. And um, so that actually makes um, ugh, grabbing something, um, whatever, 46. <laughs> So I've got some papers that I want from my friend Mona, and I thought I would look for um, a couple other things to put in here that I thought she would like. Um, this is a children's poem book. Or no, it isn't. It's uh, Christopher Robbins when we were young. Is it Christopher Robin or children's? It looks like Christopher Robin. The world of Christopher Robin. So I was just going to look and see. And it's kind of done in a poetry style. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I didn't realize there were color plates in here. So I should see what those are because maybe one of these would be conducive to what I'm doing and for this particular book. Oh my goodness. I wish I'd seen that mouse one before I did that other book. Okay, so if I go back here, there's one, not that one, there was another one I saw that I liked. Let's do this one. Look at how pretty that is. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we're going to do that one. And then I want to take... Um, out of this <clears throat> poem book, I wanted to take a poem to use. And I don't, I mean, it's hard to kind of like pick one that goes. So it's just fun just to take a poem from anywhere and, you know, toss it in. So let's take this one. And I just tear these out. Um, I haven't taken time to like try and tear the book apart. And, and then I just leave that rough edge. It's perfectly fine. So the thing is, now I, I have these ones picked out that I want to add. So I'm adding, let's count, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, that was not one I meant to do, <laughs> put that one, and 35, so that would be um, 70 pages, which is actually a, probably a good amount, and then there might be some other little additions, but the main thing is to get these um, to the right size for the book and then figure out where I want to put them in the book. So 
So I'm going to fold some of these. I was so happy when I found this pretty daisy picture with the daisy flower crown. This will go in just like it is, but I'm going to have to do some cutting. So let's see what size cutting we need. I'm glad it's Friday. Is anybody else glad it's Friday? I tell you, I do like Fridays. <laughs> I cannot lie. All right. And then this just goes in, just like that. And then what I do is I come back, um, I'll take one of these pieces I sewed, I took off, and I will make this um, a sturdier back and front to give this book, this page, um, I'll sew it, and then that will give this page stability because we don't want this to be tearing, so I'll save that. So now we have <clears throat> this pretty C picture and I was thinking it might be nice to have this shell rather than going like, I mean, I could go like this um, and then it would be like that, which is a good size. Or I could go like this and then you have a shell as well on both sides. And that's the right size as well. There's ostrich in the middle, but that's neither here nor there. Let's just go this size, you know? Sitting here trying to figure out what I wanna do. <laughs> we'll just go that size. And since that's the bigger end down there, or up there or whatever, let's just do it this way. There, that's nice. Okay, now I have a nature journal page, so I need to trim it first. I took this because it had an oak, an oak leaf on it, which I don't want to lose it. So I'm going to do it like this so we still get the oak leaf. And then I'll make this um, a fold over page. And um, I actually think that would be a good idea. I'm going to trim this just a little more since I had a rip there. Okay, so that's good. Let's trim the edge of this one. This is another nature journal page and it had a dog which was the reason I took it, because it had a dog, and it's so cute. And I'm gonna let that be a skinny page too. I have plenty of full-size pages, so I think it's okay to have some skinny pages. And I think I'm gonna make these a smaller, like two different sizes. So I'm gonna have this one here. And then I'll have the dog, and then you open, there's the fox. So I think that's good. Then I have this cute one. This one has um, a dog on one side, which was on purpose again. And I'm going to go ahead and make that a skinny page as well. And let's see how we want to do that. We can do two different sizes this way. We can have this size and this size. All right, then we have a music page, Song of the Marines. But I liked the kind of tropical picture on it, which was why I chose it. So let's do a little trimming. And then let's just make sure, now see I'm not going to trim off, I don't want to trim off <clears throat> that part, so maybe what I need to do is figure where I have to fold it so that it works. 
And then I will um, do what I did with the other one. And I'm just going to fold the page in. And I could, I could make a tuck with this then easily enough. And this actually works really well. Because I didn't really have any a lot of spots like that. This beautiful page... Isn't this pretty? It's actually from the night before Christmas. And it's really pretty. And I love it. I just love it. It's so pretty. So I think this one I'm going to fold in half and pray that I don't have to cut off any bunnies. I swear. I'm not going to lose bunnies. <laughs> no. Because it's too cute. There. That was super close, wasn't it? Okay, we didn't lose any bunnies. All right. And then Peter Rabbit. This is a 1987 edition, and this baby is big. We can probably get a few pages out of this one. Well, I for sure want um, Peter Rabbit. So I'm thinking, let's cut this in half this way. And then I need to re-trim this piece because it was a little crooked. And then I think if I fold it in half, yep, we're good, we're good. All right. So let's really, uh, you know, there's no way I'm going to fold poor Peter Rabbit the wrong direction. So let's see what we can do for him. If I want him to show on the back side, I'm going to have to do it like this. And this can be, is just the cutoff. Okay, so then it's like this, and then there's Peter Rabbit. So that worked. And then this is perfectly fine. Like this, and probably should see if I need. Okay, it looks like we're okay with this too. <clears throat> all right, let's put these into the book. Now that I have all kinds of sizes, and before I put them in, let's fix this. So I'm just gonna start by um, gluing it, and then later is when I will come back and um, we'll take care of the sewing it so that it stays, because we don't want issues. Of books falling apart because <laughs> that would not be good right okay so we just lay that down and go like that and then I'm just going to do the same right here and I'll just kind of estimate on this rather than and then this will give some strength to this um, so you don't have to worry about it falling apart and coming out someday because we don't we do not want that to happen do we nope okay so I'm just gonna go like this and it won't be stuck down perfectly but like that does not even matter and then I'll just trim this so that Cute. All right, so then the trick is to make sure you're folding it right in the middle. So because this does add some bulk, but that's okay. And then see here, it's split a little. 
but thankfully, because I'm sewing this, it's going to be just fine, and that will be taken care of, so I won't be worrying about that. Let's just make sure it's not too bulky here, because it is pretty bulky. All right, so let's put these in where we want them. And then we're going to move on to the next step. Got some glue stuck on my glass. Okay. If anybody's interested, this glass measuring thing is Tonic Studio. And I love it because all around all the edges, you get the zero, so you can measure out this way. And I love that. And then there's just this 8 by 5 by 5 by 5 and then there's this four point, you know, there's just these different measurements all around and I love it. And I I noticed that there was another a Tim Holtz thing that was Tonic Studio. So I don't know if Tonic Studio is one of his brands or what, but cool, right? Okay, so let's see, let's just play around and see where we want to put different things. Because I could do quite a bit, really. Let's maybe put that there. Um, I think I would like the daisy, or else I would like this. Um, which one do I want on the white? Do I want the daisy? Nope, I don't. I think I want this one. Yeah. And I'm just going to kind of keep looking, and I'll just kind of see where I feel like I could um, add these pages in. Like, there's the cover. So I could add um, a page right here, and I think actually the daisy looks really good there. And then I could add uh, maybe this page here, because this is really pretty, and then add... Um, that there because I have to squeeze in a few things so I'm going to have to got lots of half pages now and some of them when I put the book together will go up here some will go down here it's just going to depend you know on the pages what I end up doing um, I'm just kind of trying to see what I like for certain things. Maybe this here and then I could put this here. And these this extra addition of papers is definitely going to um, make this big enough. I don't like that there. I'm just trying to figure out, you know, what's going to look good with what pages. So, you, know, you just kind of play around with it till you get it where you want it. Um, could do this, then it's kind of one, two, three, and I like that look. So we'll do that. Um, definitely can put a page here, a piece here. And I'm thinking I want this here instead. And then I just have that music sheet paper so let me see not at the middle yet so that might look good well I like that one there so I actually don't want to change how about here Okay, so now it's super thick, 
And now we have to see, as you can see, I feel like I really need to trim um, a little bit one page that seems to be sticking up too much because of the addition. So I'm just going to trim it a little bit so it's not sticking out too much. And then I think we are done with this cutter. At least I hope so. We'll just see. Okay, so then if I put it in, this is where I have to see, it'll be fine because um, there will be um, lace here. So then I want to proceed to doing, somebody suggested this to me, that before I sew the lace on, that it would be smart to do the eyelets. And you know what? That was an extremely good idea. Now, I have to get some 3 16th eyelets because I have a quarter, um, what is it, inch, there's, anyway, there's a 1 8th and a, th and a 3 16th. This is the 1 8th, that's tiny, I have that size. This is the 3 16th, but my box of bigger ones is totally a different size in that hole. It's actually this hole, which is fine for something thin like this, but when I'm doing a book cover, um, this does not go through the book cover. So that's been kind of a struggle that um, I would like to solve, <laughs> as you can well imagine. So I'm going to get the one I want out of here really quick like sort of quick like maybe not as quick as I would like and this is what I'm going to use kind of a pewter color maybe so what I want to do is I want to measure this for my hole so I'm going to punch them both at once and um, I want the hole to be in a little bit so with my cover here's the zero and it looks like this is going to be the middle right here so it's just determining where I want the hole punched. And I think I'm gonna put the mark right there. Okay, let's see if we can do this right. I just watched another tutorial and saw I was doing part of it not correctly with the crocodile. So it's just, a, it's a learning curve for sure. And I wanna do both at the same time, but this, I won't do both, but it will make the mark so I can do one at a time. Because one at a time works fine. Two at a time, not so much. But then I want to see, I want to be sure I get my holes. There we go, in the same place. <laughs> but yeah, I definitely have to get that smaller size for my my book journals because those are really hard to get um, the punch through. All right, so there we go. Now let's see if I can remember. It says this is the right size, I'm pretty sure, for this size. Um, Supposedly, there was a whole bunch of, there's supposed to be like directions with this package. And honestly, I did not see anything but the back of the package with directions. So that's why I went online and I found the directions online um, so that I can actually do this. But, um, so the base, there's the base, there's the top. So I know how it's supposed to go. 
So usually I just put this in here. And you don't have to use the bottom piece, um, but I, I like to use the bottom, but it makes it a lot harder to say the least. It does make it difficult to get this in the right spot because that little piece has a hard time staying exactly where you put it, but I usually manage to do it just fine. And you can feel the crimp that it did not work. <laughs> I wonder if I did this the way they say, if it would do the right thing. Now see, because I did it wrong, I gotta take it out and it didn't work right. All right, seriously, Terry. Seriously, let's try it again. I think it would probably work better if I went upside down like this. I'm gonna have to re-watch those darn instructions. Because I'm definitely having my issues. All right, that time it went. And I'm going to just go over it one more time just to be sure. I don't want it falling off. That would just be so annoying. I mean, you can do just one. They all show it with just one and apparently it makes it work correctly or something, but anyway, I'm going to get this figured out someday. <laughs> I'm going to know what I'm doing someday with this crocodile. <clears throat> the learning curves of tools, you know, I think that's the whole thing. There's just, there's just a learning curve and I do love this thing, so... Okay, and then I'm just going to do like I did, and I'm going to turn it the correct way, and just give it an extra squeeze and make sure it's not going to come apart. Okay, so now, now I've already got that done, so I sew my lace um, right here, which is not a problem. I know who this is for now, so. So here are my laces. And I also want to think about a pocket. And sometimes I will take my colored cards, my colored note cards, and make a pocket. Or I could take my tea dyed note cards and make pockets. And then I would put the pockets right here. And then I would usually, um, I'll distress this and I'll stamp on it. And then that will make a really cute little pocket for this. And then it just gets glued on. So that's probably what I'm gonna do with that. But then I, I look at this and I go, okay, what lace will look pretty on here? And I have a lot of laces, so there's a lot of choice for me. And so let's see, I usually go for kind of a wider lace and this is a lot more white. So I'm thinking a white lace would be the best. I've got a really pretty lace here, but it's not really, you can see it's not the right type for this, but I am tempted to cover the card a little bit just to give it some stability and put it here. So that's, um, that would actually be really pretty, wouldn't it? I think I might do that. So I'm gonna see if I can remember to do that. One can only hope, right? Let me put together my pieces of lace here so it doesn't get everywhere on earth. But, oh, but, 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 I also have this. Um, this is beautiful. I found this at a estate sale. Isn't that just gorgeous? So here's another idea while I sit here and think. Let's clip this together so that it quits moving on me. So I have this and I have this. 
So if I sew these two together here and here, I will have a really pretty lace cover. I really like that. So maybe that's what I'll do. Let's just do a little trimming, because I'll trim at the end too, but I want to be sure I have the right amount of lace, because you do not want to not do the right amount. And then you come at the end and you're like, oh no, I did the wrong amount. Because that's not fun. All right, so we got that. Let's just get this other piece trimmed to what I want. Right, right about here. Yeah, I'd rather trim a little bit big and be, you know, have it be off a little, like, and then I just trim it at the end because I think that's better than not doing it right. So I think this will make a lovely cover for this thing. So I'm going to stop this and sew this and come back and then you can see it. Okay, let's just finish this up quick. Okay, so I made this part all set now, so I don't have to worry about this at all. And um, I'll be, now obviously I did crooked. I didn't do crooked here, but I did do crooked here. But I'm gonna be putting something right here, so that will hide out um, a little collage piece will detract from the crookedness of the pink ribbon. So, the pink ribbon is the only part that's crooked. The rest is fine. So I thought for the this part where it's gonna be held together, and I tape that in, but I thought I would use um, this particular seam binding, because it's white. And I think white will be perfect, don't you? And, it's going to be white with a little bit of pink ribbon, okay? So you just figure out how much you think you need um, for this tie. Now, I am out of pink ribbon right there, which should be enough, should be plenty for the tie. So I'm not too worried about that. Um, let me just trim this here and let's see what we've got. So um, we have this will give you plenty of room to tie because I'm not knotting it. And so if I bring it down here, I still have a little bit of pink ribbon, which is good because I can use that somewhere else in the journal. So, and white just seemed the perfect color for this with a little bit of pink. And I think that will be lovely for sure. Alright, so this is what I do. Might as well do it. It's got a little time and it's not going to get in the way of my hand stitching, so I'm not really worried about that. But let's. Here's your seam binding. There's the back. I'm going to turn it around and put the ribbon on the front. That's how I want the ribbon to be. So I'm just going to. Hold that up really little like this, twist it a little, and get it through here. All right, then what I'm gonna do is make sure it is the direction I want it this way. 
because it's that's where I want it like that okay and so this part in here does not have to be that direction it's just going to be like this right here a little bit of pink ribbon if I want it to be pretty pretty I can go like this okay so why don't I do that and get a piece of um, tape because really that's all I do I just put a piece of packing tape and I only do it on these laminated ones because um, what a mess I'm making okay never mind that piece because it you don't hardly even see it and then it holds it down flat and it's really nice to get a pretty you know a decent flat piece so we just go like this and we just put this down there you go flatten it down really good around all these edges and then you have your piece then keep it one length at this point and you're going to bring it over here to this side so you're going to keep it keep it like this keep it like this um, and keep it even of course because you don't want to make a disaster and like this just like bringing it where I want it and I think what I'm gonna do is clip this okay because then I don't have to worry I only have to think about this little piece so now this piece here and I'll be folding this over so let's trim off the extra because it's gonna go like this so bring this piece in exactly like that um, you're gonna want to make sure it's not twisted when you put this in you've got it the way you want it okay so this like this is here okay and then this piece is going to be just like the other one and I've got it a little bit too big so I'm going to take a little off and just put that just like that and this is how it's going to be exactly the same as the other one okay so that's my plan so I'll just take off a piece of this packing tape which is not the good packing tape I thought it was going to be so I am a bit disappointed in this packing tape but sometimes you know what are you going to do okay and just push that down good and now all you have to do this is really easy is Okay, so just fold this back up, pull your string so you've got the middle, and then just snip, okay? And then, that's all you have to do, then when you've sewn this in, which this has to be decorated before I sew it in, and I'll get the pockets and everything in here too first, and then all you have to do is tie this shut, and this will be this thing and I just I love it it turned I think it turned out really good I'm, I'm really happy with how this is coming I think it's gonna be super pretty and it really worked to get this whole part done first instead of waiting to the end because waiting to the end does make it a little difficult so I have to make a collage piece and I have to do the um, cards which will get decorated as well so there we are everybody i think we're good thanks so much for watching uh this next installment of the daphne's diary inspired deck journal bye